Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, that we can trust you. You're so dependable. You're so dependable. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It says the word of the Lord is alive and active, more powerful than a two-edged sword. And sometimes when we hear the word spirit, it's like, ooh, spirit, is it a ghost? No. Uh, think about uh, when we have a pep rally, right? What do we say? The person who comes has the best school spirit, right? So it's the heart of the organization. And so we want God's spirit. We want to have his heart. The name of this church is Image Church, right? The Imano Day. So we want to be made in the image of God. We want to look like him. So right here is a good place to lift your hands if you'd like to and say, God, give me your spirit. Give me your heart. I want to look like you. I want to talk like you. I want to walk like you. I want to be more like you, Jesus. Less of me and more of you, God. Less of me and more of you. Yeah. If you provide the fire, I'll provide the sacrifice. If you provide the spirit, I will open up the sky. Can y'all sing it out? Come on. If you provide, if you provide the fire, I'll provide the sacrifice. I'll provide the sacrifice. If you provide.
yield to you, Jesus, if you provide the Sounds good, sing it out. I will open up inside.
close with this and start with prayer, but I want you to keep thinking about that this week. Your brain is somebody else's brain. See, we are the beneficiaries of sacrifices we can't imagine and risk we didn't calculate. We live in cities that we didn't build and we drink from wells that we didn't even dig and we harvest from fields right now that we didn't even plant. Why? Because somebody a long time ago had radical discipline, hope, and love. We are the answer to prayers that we know nothing about. Two hundred years ago, somebody was somewhere praying that you would be able to sit in those comfy chairs while they were in those fields toiling. Come on. Somebody was praying that you could drive your beautiful car and park it right in that parking lot while they were out sweating, hoping that one day the tears and the blood and the praise would pay off. Discipline in our finances, in our fasting, in our health, in our prayers. I'm asking those who want more discipline to come to the altar. We're praying for generations and we're praying for nations to be impacted because of our discipline. And who knows, 200 years from now, the very discipline of you walking to this altar will change a generation. Father, I thank you, God. I thank you for your son that had the discipline to crawl on a cross for our sins so that we can stand here in our fine clothes and worship you today. I thank you, God, that you knew well before the beginning of the earth that we would fall and you would have a perfect plan to wrap yourself in flesh so that we may stand before you and pray. Lord, I pray right now, Father, for discipline. Father, it's hard. It's ugly and sometimes, most of the time, it's not. It doesn't look like what the world has called us to do. But Father, I am praying for the seeds of our next generation. Father, the world says that church folk are lost. That this generation doesn't want to come to church. They don't want to worship God. But Father, I bind that in the name of Jesus. I pray because of the prayers of the people that are standing around this altar, Father, that somebody wakes up to now and said, I don't deserve to be here, but somebody was praying for me. Father, there are things that we can be disciplined for, like our finances for us to get land and yada, yada, yada. That's great. But I'm praying for spiritual discipline. I'm praying that your name will live on forever and ever and ever because of the discipline of the people that are standing in this place. I pray that Jesus' name will continue to be made famous in all of the earth because of the discipline of your people. Give us discipline. Father, let us have a long obedience in the right direction. Let us never turn from the left or the right, Father, and let us continue to walk into the promise that you have given us. I thank you for this place, this place to discipline, Father. To expand is going to take discipline, God. To be able to impact our community is going to take discipline. And I pray for the leaders, for the people, Father, the, the, the very things that you will be impacting because of this church. I pray for our discipline. Let us be good stewards of what you have given us. I thank you. I praise you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, good morning, church. We're going to just keep it in that same.
place of rest. Just giving it up to the Lord. Um, Sister Camilla asked me just to share a little bit of what I read this weekend. And it comes from Psalm 46. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give us way. Though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitat, uh, habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will, be, God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of the host is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come behold the works of the Lord. How he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I'm gonna say that one more time. Be still and know that I am God. A lot of times when we think about being still, sometimes we just want to be silent. But the being still is refocusing our attention to the Lord. The being still is turning our attention, our affection towards God. So this morning, as you stand to your feet, as we worship with the Lord this morning, I ask that you lift up your hands because God is worthy of all praise. Lord God, we just thank you that you're in this place this morning. God, as, as Lady Sherelle talked about discipline, God, that we will focus our mind and attention on you because you are holy, you are exalted, God. You are worth more than anything else, Lord God. And so we worship you this morning. We lift you high, God. We love you, Jesus.
we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Today, my series, we're talking about health, being disciplined in our health, and I wanted, oh, this is your mind, oh, <laughs> and church, I wanted uh, Kenneth, me and Kenneth have been talking about health, and I wanted him to share his testimony of how uh, the Lord worked on uh, his health and his scenario, so Kenneth, go on and introduce, and also Kenneth is a new member as well, amen? Remember, so he'll get a certificate today, but Kenneth, I want to go ahead and just introduce yourself and share your story. Sure, sure. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, proud, proud to be a member here. Uh, Javon and my fiance, the better half of me. Uh, we started attending back in October. Uh, we attended the new orientation back in December. And so, yes, and I guess we'll be introduced today as new members. Um, there is a strong correlation between your physical health and your spiritual health. And God has really done a renaissance in my life as to both. I mean, if you rewind the clock, clock back about four years ago, uh, I moved here from New Orleans, and um, there were a lot of things in my life that really uh, were really heavy on my heart. I mean, just heavy in my life. Uh, my parents were suffering from cancer. Um, a little bit of time after that, hurricane, house, things like that. Uh, that really was put me in a bad place where even though you're going to church and you're doing these things, just the cast and cares of life are weighing down on you. And as far as how it correlates to, your, it starts to affect your physical health. Uh, you start to look at other avenues to kind of fill those voids, and I did that. Uh, you're, 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 eating, <laughs> you're eating excessively, right? Uh, you're even drinking, right? You're doing things that more or less have a negative impact on your health, and that is what was happening to me. Now, when you start to gain weight, it starts to happen a little bit at a time. It doesn't all happen at once. All of a sudden, you start having, you know, your waist starts to feel a little bit tighter. You try to talk yourself into and saying there's something else when really it is weight. Uh, it starts to affect your health. I'm going to give you an amen on that one. I know something <laughs> about that. <Get laughs> right, amen. You try to play it <laughs> off. And you, try, you, you know, you try to do those things, and, and then next thing you look up, and then you're, you're, you're heavier, you're, you're, you know, you're having health concerns. And I actually had, I think, hit 240 pounds, something like that. Um, and I just got to a point uh, where, and, and get this, I was still working out. I was still in the gym. I was still working out about an hour and a half a day, maybe something like that. But I wasn't doing the other things. And how it relates spiritually, still going to church, but I wasn't doing the other things. Mm -hmm. Discipline is a holistic concept. That's good. That's it's good. a holistic concept, right? Um, you know, you're going to the gym, but if you're not eating, and if you're not being consistent with it, then you're not going to see the progress. If you're just going to church and you call yourself a Christian, yes, that gets you through the gates of heaven, but does that really bring you to the levels of Christ that you can be? Right? There are levels you can grow spiritually, there are levels you can grow physically. Yeah. And right? And I had to get to a point where I just got sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm -hmm. Right? And I made that choice physically. At the same time, I started to make that choice spiritually. Um, and so spiritually, I started to do the other things that may be beyond just a member. That means actually seeking the word, believing the word, living the word. And as far as physically, started doing the other things, eating. Mm. Eating is a huge, huge, huge wow. thing. Major. It's a it's a major, major thing. And I started, I made a huge commitment before I ever touched the weight was to eat right. Wow. And so even just going to the store, making groceries, I made different decisions. Veggies. Um, I put myself really eating a lot of veggies, making sure that I taught myself how to eat sporadically to where I wasn't overeating. You mean from Louisiana, yes. I, I've been to Louisiana. Louisiana. <laughs> Now, I've been in Louisiana, you know, everything's smothered, it fried, it laid is. to the side, and it's good now. All of that. But, but just, how, how did you transition to, to, to that? Like, what, 
What, what was, what was the, so how did you transition to that? It was just a mental aspect, you just said, I'm, I'm gonna do it. I first started an eating plan. Okay. Um, and I was, I started an eating plan while I was eating five or six meals a day, uh, but they were small meals. Uh, seven o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, two o'clock, four o'clock, six o'clock. And the six o'clock meal was mainly just veggies and it was just mainly lean, uh, some type of lean protein. And I actually measured my food, I actually bought a food scale. Wow. And depending on the scale, for example, if it was chicken, I did six ounces. If it was a uh, heavier protein like salmon or steak, I did, uh, I did lower, I did maybe about four ounces, right? If it was something light like a fish, maybe seven ounces. And I made, and I stuck on that plan every single day. And that's before I ever touched the weight. Doing that alone, Pastor, within four months, I lost 55 pounds. Oh, oh. In four months, you lost 55 pounds. 55 pounds. Wow. Yeah. Now tell us how, after you lost the weight, tell us what you do, right? And, and, and how that transitioned to another thing that, yeah. you, that you do. Yeah. So I lost the weight, and losing the weight, I no longer had sleep apnea. I was actually diagnosed with mild sleep apnea, and I, didn't, I no longer had that. So a lot of the health issues started to run away. But then I realized there was another level I wanted to go. Uh, it wasn't enough for me to lose the weight. I wanted to, I wanted, I wanted to tone up. I wanted to be muscular. I won't even say tone, I wanted to be ripped. <laughs> I, did. I wanted to be ripped. And so I really, uh, at that point, I started to transition to where I increased my protein portions. Uh, I increased my protein portions to maybe about 12 ounces uh, for lunch or for dinner. I, I actually got to a point since I've learned how to, that four months taught me discipline not to overeat. And so at that point I started to remove the small meals, focused on three meals and transition to veggies and a lean meat. Uh, and then from there, uh, I started to maintain kind of a steady pound loss. Of, actually I lost another additional 10 pounds, but then I was building muscle at the same time that I was losing weight. Wow. And then the next level, um, I actually got to a point where I was progressing at a certain point that um, I entered a bodybuilding competition. Bodybuilding. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's real stuff now. This ain't no, you know, stuff you see. This is real bodybuilding, like flexing type stuff. It, it's just a real deal, y'all. But, but I, Ken, I want to just thank you for your testimony. Oh, you. I wanted to bring a real case example of someone who has been through some trials. And, and really, just really became disciplined, was able to do it. Uh, and I'm sure that can translate. If you can do it, I'm sure other, other people can do it as well. Yes. Wow. Bless you. Now give me a hand. I'll give you a Get this mic. Pastor, I'm going to do some push-ups tonight. Get ready. Get ready. Can I swole them? We, have a, we need a swole ministry, man. A swole ministry. All right, church. Um, so we're, the title of my message is called Discipline with My Health. Discipline with My Health. And um, I want to talk about us as believers being disciplined in our physical and our mental health. Um, as African Americans, um, we are two times more likely to die from heart disease than our white brothers and sisters. Uh, in addition, um, from African Americans from ages 35 to 64 are 50% more likely to have high blood pressure than, than white Americans, right? And we, we can, we're, 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 we're into it now. So just by a show of hands, no shame, how many of us are actually on high blood pressure medicine, just by a show, show of hands. Okay. Uh, how many of you should be on it, but you, you are going to die? That's a good question I should be, I should be asking there. But these issues in our community, high blood pressure, diabetes, strokes, you look at the numbers, and these are from the CDC, uh, we are just, the, the, the maroon is us, uh, and the, uh, the uh, teal is uh, white Americans, okay? As you can see here, we're just the propensity for us to have these conditions are just so much more higher than other races. Now, what goes into those numbers? That's a lot of uh, socioeconomic type of things. But a lot, what I want to do as a pastor, I want to talk about our health because, as Brother Kim said, uh, the spiritual. As we look at the spiritual, we also must look at uh, the physical as, as well. Okay. So discipline in my health. Let me pray for us before we, before we go. Father, we just thank you, God, for your word. 
Uh, Father, this is a different type of message, God, but I just pray, God, that you speak through me, speak to me, allow me to be used for your glory. Allow this message to land on good soil and produce much fruit. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, church, um, so health in our community is something that we really take for granted. And I really want you to focus on it. We take it for granted until we're forced to focus on it, right? And what I want us to do is to be more proactive, be more aware of our health, and take the precautions it takes to make sure that we protect our health. Uh, first point I want you to write this down. Um, God created the human body and designed it to function. God created the human body and designed it to function. You look at Genesis uh, 1 26. The scripture says, Let then God said, Let us make man. You see that? Let us make man. Flip over to Genesis 2 and 7. It says, Then the Lord formed man from the dust, the ground, the breath, and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, and the man became a living being. In this text, the word form conveys a potter forming something in, from clay into a, 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 um, a, an image that, that God formed us. And we look at the, the next picture. Go ahead and put that next picture up. So you look at this, when you look at your brain, when you look at all these lungs, and I'm not gonna, I got a lot of doctors in here practicing. I ain't going to mess up these words, amen. But when you look at how all of these things work together, this is how God formed us, that God uh, strategically put the brain here, that the brain can process that when you touch a stove, that there are nerve endings that go all the way up to your brain to let you know that the stove is hot. Uh, that when you are checking your, um, when you're running, your, your heart is, is, is beating, right? Uh, your blood, your heart is pumping um, uh, blood all the way to your your, uh, your your extremities, right? I'm not a doctor, so this is don't 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 judge me, all right, man. All right, but God designed the circulatory system. He designed the nervous system and, and all these things to work together for your function, so that you can function as a human being. So God made you. And one thing we understand that if you are a creator, you have a design and an intent. Uh, Sherelle was, uh, needed me to do something to her car, and I couldn't struggle. Uh, I struggled. No, I could, you know, do things with cars and things like that. But I had to. I was struggling with this this one. I was not trying to figure out how to program something, but I had to end up pulling out the manual. I said, "Forget it. I'm gonna stop trying to do it by my intellect, and I'm gonna pull out the man manual because the creator." who created the car has a design and how this thing is supposed to function. And if I'm going to understand how to operate the vehicle, I need to read the manual. And, and this is what we need to understand when it comes to our body, that God has designed you specifically to function uh, as, as a human being. So when we think of the brain and, and the heart and all these things, right? So if you run a fever, a fever is a sign of what? An infection. That's how God designed the body. Your blood pressure is supposed to be what? 120 over 80. Do you see this? Right? And when y'all go to the doctor, they give you blood, take your blood, and they measure the levels, and they do all. They are uncovering what God has already designed, how the body is supposed to function. This is the way God has made you, and you need to understand how God has made you. And, and we, uh, as a culture, um, sometimes we are in denial of that. Right? We, we're living and we're, we're worshiping pleasure, we're worshiping food, and not really tapping in to understand that how God has wired us to function. Yeah? So here's the second point I want you to write this down. Uh, God has given us science to understand how the body functions. Uh, one of the uh, uh, early church fathers, St. Augustine, says, all truth is God's truth. All truth is God's truth. So whether it is outlined specifically in the Bible, 
or whether we can take a truth that we see and see the revelation through scripture, it's still true. The fact that your blood pressure should be 120 over 80, it don't say that in Genesis 1, 26, amen? But it's still a theological truth. All truth comes from God. And we as Christians need to take a step in our faith where we need to use the Holy Spirit and we need to use wisdom. Uh, one of the biggest things we saw during, during, uh, during COVID, and I'm not here to judge anybody who took the vaccine or didn't take it, this is not what that message is. But we as Christians looked kind of some type of way when we were saying, oh, well, I'm just going to pray about it. <laughs> so did they pray about polio? Did they pray about smallpox? All these other things that we have eradicated. With the they didn't just pray about it. They had to design something to fix it. Now, we are going to pray about it, church. But there are some steps that you need to take. And there, God has given us science to be able to understand how our body functions and how our brain works. So we cannot be in denial of the results. If the doctor took your blood, your blood ain't right, son. You just can't come in and pray, Lord, God, heal me. Lord, I want you to heal me right now. No, you need to eat right. <laughs> you understand me? You need to change your diet. And, and, and this is the connection, right? The, 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 the Word of God, and, and we need to, yes, the Word of God is infallible, but this was written over 2,000 years ago, okay? So the advances in modern medicine, God has created that for your benefit. The fact that, go on, put that screen up. The fact that now, in 1971, they were able to, to, uh, to create the MRI technology. So now they ain't got to guess what's going on in your brain. They can take a picture of your brain and know what's going on in your brain. So we in the spiritual, sometimes we get a little fuzzy because now we start tapping into, wow, well, is it God or is it science? It's both. Do you see that? It's both. That God has given men, even unbelievers, God can work through an unbelieving doctor to create a technology that benefits and helps to save your life. The, more, uh, the Hamlin situation, did y'all see that? That was cool, y'all. Yeah, it was scary at first, me and the boys watching. But he stopped beating, his heart stopped beating on the field. They come in there and they do CPR, they, they resurrect him. And so there was two, uh, I said resurrect, resuscitate. <laughs> <laughs> I knew a nurse was going to get it. I knew a nurse practitioner was going to get it. But they came in and they, they re 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 resuscitated. <laughs> that word. Not Lazarus. Hamlet, okay? <laughs> but they resuscitated him, okay? Part of the miracle was that he's alive. That's a miracle. That's God. Amen. Here's the other miracle that God had qualified doctors, medical professionals, to have the knowledge and the skill to help him get to help. Yes. That's a miracle in itself. Yes. So, so there was two miracles. Yes, God healed him. God desired for him to be here. He healed him. But God used and gave man the access to knowledge and facts to be able to heal this brother. Church, if you are in denial, right, uh, we need to trust the science. We need to trust the science. That, that, uh, not all science, but there are good uh, articles, scholarly articles on, on, on our health. Amen? Amen? So God, in 1846, uh, John Collins Warren created anesthesia. Right? Could you imagine getting something without anesthesia? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Some of you say, I'm, I'm saved. I don't want anesthesia. I'm going to just trust the Lord. You're going to be hurt, amen? Right? Right? Uh, insulin. How many diabetics? Type 1, type 2. Uh, in here. Insulin in 1922 was created for our benefit. A kidney transplant. They can take a transplant out of one person and put it in another person. That's crazy, y'all. 1952, they, they, they did that. So church, all of this is created for you. So as my brother said here, you're coming here, yes, we're understanding that God uh, is real, we're worshiping, we're praising, we're prioritizing, we're reading our word, the spiritual, 
but also how does that apply to my health? How does that apply to, to, to me using wisdom when it comes to me living my life and, and me ignoring it, saying, no, Pastor, I, I'm good. You can also be, uh, it's a selfish thing, right, to, to, to think of that, right? Are y'all with me, church? Yeah. All right, so first, first point is this. Number one, God uh, does want us to be in good health. Let me explain this. Uh, there are some things, because of sin and because of depravity, we don't under fully understand everything. Right? We get science is advancing, but they still don't understand the cancer. How do we defeat cancer? How do we fight cancer? They still don't have a clue. But we do know that we saw Jesus all throughout the New Testament. He was healing folks. That he was healing folks of sickness and disease, and his desire was to see people healed. Uh, also, um, uh, if you read this text uh, in, in um, and uh, uh, John, uh, third, uh, third John, one, two, uh, verse one, uh, chapter one, verse two, it says, "Dear friend, I pray that you are prospering in every way. I am, are in what good health, just as your whole life is going well." Uh, John was writing this to uh, his friend, uh, his, uh, uh, to Gaius, and uh, here. It was a common introduction for them to pray for good health. Back then, you can imagine, they didn't have all the advances we had. So good health was something to be cherished and something to be valued. So here in this uh, introduction, uh, John is praying that I pray that you are in good health. Not just the, the spiritual, but I pray that everything is going on well with you. Amen? So, um, number two, put this up. Your body is a what, church? Yeah. Your body is a temple. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 20 says, uh, Flee sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the person who is sexually immoral sins against his own what? His own body. Don't you know that your body, body, is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you are from God, you are not your own, for you are bought with a price. So glorify God with your body. The scripture is about sexual immorality, but it's also talking about how we affect our body. That, that God cares about how we treat our body. It's not just how we treat it with sexual sin. It's also how to, what are we putting into our body? Do you even read nutrition facts? Right? To, to know what is going into your body. It also says that we ought to glorify God with our body, that our, our bodies are temples. Right? And so we need to have a different relationship with food. It, it, it boils down to that. We always joke uh, Thanksgiving time we eat all the food, and we always laugh because people go to sleep. Right? <laughs> they get their itis, amen? Right? And we think that's, that's, that's funny. Right? But what is happening? What, what is actually happening? What is the science telling us as what is happening? This is where you use wisdom, Christians. That you are actually, because of the food you're eating, your body is shutting down. Right? And it's not poison. Po can we say poison? Is it, it's not poison, but what's the word? Yeah. Your body has to digest, so it shuts down so that you can't digest. So you falling asleep is not normal. Okay? <laughs> it ain't normal. That, that, that's not normal. That's not how your body is supposed to function. Right? You are to eat, and you're supposed to have energy to and feel good and move good. Right? That is not a sign of, of good. So I'm, I'm gonna follow y'all after church and see where y'all going to be. <laughs> Well, and church, I, I hope y'all can have fun with this, right? But we got to understand, what are we putting into our bodies? What are we putting into our bodies? Um, I have a Honda. Cheryl has a different car. She has a car that you have to put a different type of gas in. You know what I mean? I used to earn <laughs> You got to put the premium stuff in her car, man. I just get under leather. But you can't put 
any type of gas in the car or it'll shut down. Okay? And that's the way we need to think of our bodies and the way we treat us as food, as fuel. That we can't put anything, if you've got a luxury vehicle, you've got a nice vehicle, y'all, your body, and you need to put premium things inside of your body so that you can live, so that you can move, so that you can breathe, right? Uh, this is the way we need to uh, treat our body. Uh, this writer said this, like an expensive car, your brain functions best when it gets only premium fuel. Eating high quality foods that contain lots of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, nourishes the brain, and protects it from oxidative stress. All these big words. I'm glad I ain't a doctor. I'm in sales, right? Uh, the waste produced when the body uses oxygen. Okay. So put this stuff into your church. Uh, last but not least, there are benefits to physical training. We, we studied this last week. Uh, Paul, Paul said this, that for the training of the body has limited benefit. In this text, he's not saying that we should only focus on the spiritual. Spiritual should be the priority. But what he is affirming also in this text is that physical training does have benefits. Right? Uh, look at the, 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 the numbers, right? Uh, people who regularly exercise may lose up to 80% of their muscle strength by age of 65. Not only is exercise good for the body, but it also can improve our mental functioning. And how many when you exercise, you're just alert. You're, 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 the blood is flowing, the oxygen is flowing, right? Uh, the average person walks 7,500 steps per day. If you stick to that average step count and, and live to be 800 years old, you'll walk 110,000 miles in your lifetime, right? So these are just some statistics that show that, the, that physical health does have benefits, that if you get moving, if you are eating right, if you're doing the right things, there are benefits that are going to add to your life, church. Amen? All right. So here, here's a couple things that I want us to take action of as, as a church, as a church. Just take action of it and be cognizant. Number one, we need to we need to drink water. We need to drink water. If you want to know, know what not to do, look at what the world markets as what to do. When you go to Water Burger, you get a number one. I get a number one with cheese and jalapenos, no French fries and onion rings. Y'all okay. do that too. But look at how big the dog one drink is. They give you a plus-size drink full of sugar, full of sugar. And after you eat that food, you just like, Lord, please forgive me for what I just ate, for what I just drank. Church, we need to drink more water. Uh, I'm challenged, this program we're in, we, we're challenged to drink a gallon a day. I struggle with it, but we need to drink more water. It flushes out the system. Put down the soda. Put down all the other alternatives and just drink water. It's a challenge for you. Right? You with me, church? Amen. Number two, we need to exercise a minimum 30 minutes a day. Priorities, church. Priorities. You got time for social media. You got time for all these other things. But you don't have time to give yourself 30 minutes of exercise a day. Exercise, walk. Get up and walk. Walk around the block. Amen? Right? Praise, right? You do a praise walk, all right? Amen. <laughs> Whatever you got to do. But for a minimum of 30 minutes every day, you need to get uh, exercise. <laughs> Number three, uh, seek therapy and counseling. One thing you study is how the brain works is that life can trigger things in the brain. So some of the things we're acting out through trauma, trauma is what reorganizes the brain and how we think. So a lot of stuff that we're dealing with are things we have been dealing with since a child. Things we've dealt with through traumatic events in our life, right? You wonder why your wife's snapping your hug? It's trauma, right? You know, it is, it is a legitimate trauma that you have not walked through. And we've got to be careful not just what ends up, what enters our mind as well, church. Uh, studies show that, uh, that men who watch pornography, it changes their brain. It changes their mind. You understand this? Science. This is this is not a, a guess. They have studied.
study brains with on it and without it. It changes your doggone brain. That is crazy, y'all. So we as a process through life, we need to seek some serious therapy and some counseling to help us get through what we're going through the church. I'm a church that pray, come to the altar, we're going to deliver you, but we're going to send you right to the, this is the number to the counselor. <laughs> On Monday, schedule an appointment. We're going to pray and bless you. Yeah. Now, y'all laugh, but I believe that God can deliver you. Yeah. But you need some practical steps, church. Some of the stuff you've been through is not going to just change just right now. You need some practical steps to walk through help. Like y'all in church, y'all ain't mad at me, all right? And number four, take your medicine and vitamins. Glory to Jesus. I'm, I'm sharing my personal health journey. I, I, um, uh, listen, when do you hit 35? Is it 35? What is, what is the age? Is it 30? What's the age when you just feel stuff just change? 30? 40. You, you know, you just feel it. It's like, man. <laughs> and I, I, I'll, I'll be open and honest with you. I'll share with you. I don't know if it was stress related or what I was going through, but I was feeling different. I was feeling weird. I quit going to, going to the world. What was wrong with me? You know, I'm, a, I'm not an a, a unhealthy guy, but I was feeling bad. I went to the doctor. They checked my blood pressure. My blood pressure was high. It was high. And the doctor said, listen, you know, uh, and they kept misdiagnosing me because I looked healthy, yeah. right? Well, like, you ain't got no blood pressure problems. But the signs and the symptoms and the way I was feeling were affirmation that something was wrong. This is, this is the Holy Spirit. That's, that's guidance, okay? That's how you feel that. So I the doctor said, listen, you need to be on some blood pressure medicine. So pastor, yes, your pastor takes blood pressure medicine every morning. And I gotta be reminded. Me and Shrug get old. Did you take your medicine, baby? Did you take it? Amen. Amen. <laughs> but here's the thing: you gotta be careful with medication, right? Not all medication is good, right? But God created that too. The fact that when we get a fever, we can take Tylenol. That, that that's God is in that, okay? So, so if you, if the doctor said to get your cholesterol, you need to take some medication, you do what, church? Okay? The doctor said your blood pressure high, you need to take your what? You take your medication. Even on the mental side, if you're struggling with some similar mental stuff, don't be in denial. Right? If you're going to change your diet and all this stuff, don't be in denial with that stuff. You need to consider and seek advice. I'm not a medical professional. I mean, put a disclaimer at the end of this message. In there. <laughs> Consult your doctor, but they have studied this stuff. Trust the science. Okay? And last but not least, we need to eat. We got to eat healthy, though. We got to eat better. Um, food uh, is to help us live. We are not to live to eat, we are to eat to live. And I put on there, I'll put on my notes, moderation. Like every now and then, let's go grow, right? You know, me and Sherelle, we're we, we going to go out and have a little date night tonight. We, we, may, we may get something. You know, I, I don't know, right? But every now and then, you can have some good stuff. But that can't be your whole diet. Right. That can't be your whole diet. We've got to stay away from all the sugar, the carbs, the fried foods. Come on, church. It's good, ain't it? It's good. Fried catfish is good. Fried catfish. Dip it in the tartar sauce. It's good, Doc. Smothered pork chops and all that stuff is good. But it's not good for you. And the spiritual side of it, for the spirit, one of the fruits of the spirit is self-control. If you are out of control with your diet, are you under the unction of the Holy Spirit? Or are you under flesh? One of the sins of gluttony, back then, they didn't have access to food like we had, right? So the sin of gluttony, people who were heavy had money, right? They, were, they had money. 
They were an uh, uh, indulgence of, of meat, and, and they were on a Daniel fast. They were on King Herod's fast, amen? Uh, they were eating good, eating a lot of meats and foods, and, and that was the, the sin of gluttony. Those who were just overindulging, you've already eaten too much, and after every meal, you got to have a dessert? Hmm. After every meal, you got to have a dessert? Really? Yes. After every meal? <laughs> Sometimes you indulge, but we have to do a better job of taking care of our body, church. Let me pray for us. Father, uh, this is a different type of word today, God. Uh, God, I know you're in it. God, I know you're, 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 you're in it. God, I just pray, God, that, that us, we use wisdom when it comes to our health. God, you care about us. You, you love us, and you want to see us <coughs> flourish. You want to see us prosper. And God, I just pray, God, that we just take action with our health and with our diet. God, um, it's not easy. Father God, the word this year is discipline. I pray that we are able to come off with some medication. I pray that we're able to develop some habits and set some generational things that are being passed down to our children and our children's children. God, I know this is a sensitive topic. But Father God, you love us where we are. So no matter what we do, we thank you for loving us. But God, we pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, God, you give us the control over one thing that controls us. And that is food, that is pleasure, all these things that are temporary. And God, I pray that we develop some healthy habits to be able to live a long and prosperous life. On this God, we love you. Amen. 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 Uh, at this moment, um, you want to um, never know how the gospel works, right? Uh, God is in this, right? God is in this. And the reason why we preach, the reason why we have a, a new mind is because we have a new relationship with Jesus Christ. And through this process, we have a new perspective on finances, on health, and all these things, right? If you first have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't have a, like, an understanding of spiritual things. So at this moment, we want you to uh, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We want you to take that first step and say, listen, I don't know who God is, but I want to know more about this God. I, I want to take a step in my relationship with Him. If that's you today, I want you to go ahead and come forward. I want you to come forward, come to the altar. We'll have some brothers and some sisters come and walk with you and talk to you more about your faith, about what it means to be a believer. Because that is the best decision that you can make. Sherelle said, spiritual things are the priority. Yes, Lord. And we want you to get that. We want you to get eternity right. So if you die today, you know where you're going. Amen? So is there one today? Here I am. Here I am.
actually deal with the condition every day as well. I'm type 1 diabetic and I've uh, been managing this for about 15 years and it was quite a shift, a quite a shock for me and my family at the time. I was a junior in college and you just have to, you know, manage it. I have the classic symptoms, urination, thirst, weight loss. Pretty thin as it is, but I lost 15 pounds in 10 days. Uh, 2007, but please don't ignore your bodies, get yourself checked. It's very serious and manageable, but uh, it's a serious thing for our community, so I see all the sad faces, but I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I see all the sad faces, but it's a serious thing, so please, please, please take care of your bodies. Uh, here, here are some very interesting announcements today, so I'll walk you through quite a, quite a list today. The 24th, 21st. Uh, day fast continues, so if you're doing that, I see Brother Josh yesterday, man, you look pretty good, you, you man, you, you look good, man, <laughs> I'm proud of you the way you look. Uh, the men's breakfast is January 28th, uh, it's 8 a.m., so if you want to come and join us, we'd love to see, see you guys. Uh, life groups begin the same day, Brother Chris Will, you here? I'm, I'm right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's joining over the life groups, the teams, ministry. February 5th, uh, Brother Josh is over the teens. If you raise your hand, uh, let's see the January 30th uh, annual year end tax statement will be mailed out beginning that day. Please make sure we, to see if we have all the information, contact information, and emails, uh, address. If, if we need to see you guys. Or see Sister Mary, Miss Martin, is she here today? Oh, yes, ma'am, in the back. Uh, the February is uh, Black History Month, and each Sunday we will have a different theme. As you can see, HBCU Sunday, the first Sunday, Greek Sunday next week, the week after that, Heritage Sunday, February 19th, and Soul Food Sunday. I don't know what they're going to cook that week, or uh, chillings and hot wings. <laughs> 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 yeah, we have hot wings. I'm diabetic, but I still love to eat. <laughs> Anyways, we'll move on from there. Ministry Fair is, the, is next month as well, so I guess to share with you what you can serve, how you can serve in this church as we begin to grow. As when we first started, there were seats that were that were empty in this building. The first Sunday that we came here in September of 2021, and Wendy, do you remember that? And to see this church like this is just astonishing. <laughs> Ministry, uh, marriage ministry will be hosting date night February 18th. Is there, yeah, there is a graphic. See, Brother John uh, just signed this day. Ministry, ministry, uh, mentioned it to me. It's $20 per couple. You can uh, use the QR code to see, uh, to pay. Is that right, Brother Taylor? You can pay online. Is that correct? Yeah, yes. Okay. I'll pay for one person. Oh, pay for one person. Not, yeah, $200 per couple. <laughs> uh, if there's any other announcements, pastors. Oh, excuse me. Uh, gentlemen, as you can come for the offering, I beg your pardon, excuse me, you guys can come. Uh, let's see. There are three ways to give. You can give in the baskets that are being passed around. Uh, if you have any uh, new visitor, new visitor um, cards, you can please put those in the basket as well. We'd love to get to know you and reach out to you and tell you that we love you and welcome and thank you for coming to Amos Church. You can text any amount at 84321, or you can give online at yourimagechurch.com. Uh, I believe that's it. Thank you, Brother Trey. Paul's going to address a hand clap. All right, Chris, I'm going to come talk about you quickly, please. Hello, guys. My name is Chris Jones, and I am the leader for Word at the Park. Uh, it's, a, it's a life group. It's a Christian living life group. And what we try to do at my life group, our life group, is to really meet people where they're at. You know, so we um, build a relationship. We fellowship with one another. Um, we always ask for prayer. We pray for each other. Um, and following that, we usually use uh, Right Now Media to uh, talk a, about a Christian topic, you know, whether it's you know, working from um, work-life balance or just a topic in the Bible. Uh, this uh, first semester, we're going to be looking at studying um, John. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing in Right Now Media. Um, we meet uh, February 1st. Uh, that's a Wednesday. It's going to be virtual at 7 p.m. So after this, uh, after service, we will have uh, uh, 
uh, sign up seats if you guys want to sir, uh, sign up for my life group. Uh, and that's pretty much it. You guys have a good one. All right, young kids. And Chris Walton, he thinks he's our great, but he's done a phenomenal job with his life group. His life group look members are loyal. They are loyal. Uh, anybody part of Chris Walton's group? Oh, uh, cool. Okay. But he has a great group. Great, he's doing great work with the group, uh, with the groups as well. Thank you, Chris Walton. All right, new members. And yes, we just had a uh, new members class, so <laughs> we'll get the certificates. If you uh, attended our new members class last week or two weeks ago, come on up. Do we have any? Uh, I think we had a couple of people here. Church. All right, so uh, a lot of announcements, guys. Uh, be looking out for uh, emails. Also, if y'all are connected in uh, Planning Center, how many of y'all have the mobile app for Planning Center, Church Center? Okay, go to Church Center in your app store and find Image Church. Uh, it's a quick way to give, but also to register for a lot of the events that we uh, we discuss here today. Amen. Um, that was a great, a tough, you did good, babe. That was a tough one. talked about the nervous system and the circular turn. I was talking to people. I was out of my life. <laughs> um, but health is really something we have to talk about in the black community. Um, and I think we ignore it and we push it off. But health can be generational, too. The food mom and them ate and you eat and then you teaching them how to cook it. So I think it's important that we talk about our health so we can live long life. Right? Um, so I think that's very important. Thank you, yeah. Pastor. Well, yeah, because when we got married, I had to move you from the hood to... <laughs> <laughs> You know what? When we had no money, them beans and rice, you ate them, you? <laughs> Y'all know how to throw something together, call it goulash. See, that's what my daddy told me. You go in that pantry, you find what you can, put it together, you just call it, you survive. Look at that. <laughs> Y'all, he teases me. I'm going to start praying. I'm not going to let him do it, though. Really quick. Teen, uh, the teens are planning to go to a retreat this summer. The deadline to pay a deposit is the 31st. So if you want your teen at Jaden, did y'all have fun at the retreat last year? Yeah, joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, make sure, I think it's a $150 deposit by the 31st. I know it's really close, y'all, but we really want the kids to go. So we got to save a spot in order for them to go. So see Brother Josh. Joshua Lowe, if you're interested in sending your teen. And we'll have a teen. Y'all support the teen. They're going to be selling cookies, too. They got to figure out how to raise some money to go to this conference. Because they got to raise money. You know, we got to teach them how to work. We can't give them everything. So uh, y'all support them. They'll have some fundraisers coming up. Any other things, That's Pastor? It. Okay. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. 
We thank you because you're holy. We thank you because you're sovereign. We thank you because you sent your one and only son to die on the cross for our sins that we may become um, just like you, Father. Um, I pray that our identity is not found in things or culture or even food, but our identity is found in you. I pray that as we exit this place, Father, that your protection goes before us, behind us, beside us, Father. Help us to be disciplined, God, to make healthy food choices for our bodies. Um, Father, I pray that you surround us with a community of people that can encourage us and equip us to make those decisions. But most of all, I pray that the Holy Spirit convicts us when it's something that we're not supposed to eat or not supposed to do, Father. I pray that we fill it in our bellies, yes. God. I pray, Lord, that uh, you give us long life, God. Um, you bless us and you keep us. May your face forever shine upon us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.